Hey, it's Sonic Graver here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to some more Super Collider. We're going to be exploring frequency modulation with sound files this time. So the basic steps we were exploring in the last few weeks are now going to be applied to actual audio files. In this case, in this library with my folder called Ambient, we've got three sound files here. I'm just going to go ahead and run it. And this syntax is from Eli Field Steel's tutorials. It's just a very concise way to load up audio files in any folder or any desktop rather. So I've got my library here with my ambient sound files that you may have heard before from previous videos months back. Oops. <laughs> wow, I went uh, quite low. Oh yeah, I went all the way down. All the way down. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I had that much code. That's okay. We'll go through this quite fast. And then the last sound file there. Each of these sound files are 20 seconds in length. As you can see here. Now for this synth def here, we are adding our handy dandy Eugen play buff with a stereo file, and in this case it's two channels here, the buffer argument, the rate argument, and the start position argument. And this is for running any audio file. Now I'm going to say this might sound a little strange. I'm not, I'm actually not going to run this sound file. There's nothing wrong with this uh, synth def. I meant to say synth def. I'm not going to evaluate the synth def. Why? Well, for some reason, it actually bumps up these sound files one or two semitones. Not quite sure why. Uh, it may just be the nature of my computer processing, but uh, fear not, the synth def does work. But in any case, we're going to modify this synth def by adding the frequency modulation control with our sine variable here. So we have the standard envelope that I have not changed from previous weeks and our sine oscillation that is controlled by another sine oscillation. Th this oscillation here will have the default value of one cycle per second and it will be meandering and moving to and from four cycles to eight cycles per second with the amplitude of one, including the output single signal. Uh, scaling at five. I actually probably will scale it at one down here so it'll be at its full capacity. Let's go ahead and add this. This is the example that you have heard before. Actually, no, that's that's wrong. I forgot. We're adding our play buff and scaling our control signal and envelope and adding a pan to Eugen there. My mistake. So let's see what this sounds like. So you can kind of hear this uh, stuttering and meandering between four to eight cycles. It's very shaky, not quite smooth, but you get the idea, uh, the nature of the control. Let us add some more randomness with our rate and our sign control from as slow as going through eight seconds, like one cycle every eight seconds, to one cycle per second. And really going between two and five here. I might add a little bit more, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and add some randomness here. I will say this, the lower values are a little bit more effective, but let me add some higher values here. I'm not going to exceed 20 in this case because you're going to hear a little bit of additive synthesis that I kind of find ineffective and boring, but maybe you like it. All 
right, that, that's not that bad. more frequency to the main frequency. I don't think it's directly a carrier frequency with, with a modulatory value, but I think that is the effect of adding higher frequency, more cycles per second to the given frequency. So effectively it is additive synthesis, if I have that right. Something more interesting is adding a line or an X line. Uh, so in this case, what we will do, uh, this is the example I've had previously where well, previously I've had X line, but line is just simply a linear ramp up from, in this case, 300 to 3,000, and uh, it is equidistant, meaning that the rate will be the same. It's, it's scaling from those two values at a linear interpolation. But if you want something faster, you know, ramping up exponentially faster, you know, from the low value to the high, higher value much faster, than the exponential ramp. So I believe, if I have this correct, the X line will ramp up 300 to 3000 much quicker. So you will be going to the higher frequencies much faster. It will be a fast ramp up. You might as well hear it, why not? <laughs> so a very even ramp up to that high frequency. Now here is the same exact values except with the X line. I'm going to try this one more time. little clip there, that's that's fine. Um, I could be mistaken, but X line sounds like it's ramping up much slower. So I might have had that backwards. We'll see. I'll have to check. But in any case, uh, you know, the ascending or descending um, really works well. So uh, with our play buff, with our sound files, we will uh, ramp up from just one to 10 cycles per second. So a kind of a gradual fluttering to um, a rapid fluttering 10, 10 times per second. Let's go ahead and hear this. I, I could add the argument uh, down here, but yeah, why not? I should. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and add uh, the end argument here and give it a higher value. It is hard to hear with these sound files. It's, it's very low, at least to my ears. Let's try this one more time. Uh, now, I would say this is ineffective until I troubleshoot it a little bit more, but it seems to ramp quite quickly to 30, uh, whereas with 10, it just seems a lot more gradual. Unfortunately, this sound file uh, tapers a little bit too much, and I haven't had the time to uh, find different sound files or, or change the envelope. Actually, you know what? Let me change the envelope. <laughs> Let me try this. This should be a little bit better. It's all right. Let me try 20. It's still quite fast, um, you know, the higher you go in frequency, but that's all right. Something to explore. Let's go ahead and go down. I don't know why I had negative five here, uh, but I did. Now we're going to go from 20 to two. Mm. 
it's a very slow dip down to the lower frequency. So right now it's not as effective as I would want it to be, but it's still something to explore. Let's include the X line in this case. Um, and actually, let me just go back to just one very simple. Let me evaluate that again. So I'm ascending to the higher frequency in my control with X line, with that exponential rate. Let me just go ahead and play a little bit more. And descend. You get the motion, you get the gist, but it's not as effective as I would want it to be, but that's okay. That That's part of troubleshooting. Now I did explore this with one more sound file, and this is a very simple, actually <laughs> this folder here, piano samples, it's just one, it's just one file in here. You can see when I run this, it is simply this wave file here, nothing else. Very simple in tone. And I do like that with the previous sound files, there was a lot of rich resonance and, and, and fundamentals and partials that I think could trick the person into thinking they're hearing additive synthesis or maybe they are. And so it's adding a lot more complexities. I wanted a very, very simple note. And again, it's quite quiet, so we'll have to make do. This is just the sine oscillation control meandering from four to eight cycles per second. You can barely hear it, but it's there. <laughs> Uh, this this was a hard week of troubleshooting and, and, and finding something remotely interesting. So I just made a note for myself, um, most effective sound, at least for me and my compositional process, is when the mole control and the add control, in this case these two, uh, inside the, the, the sine oscillation control there, um, if those values are less than 10, you can actually hear it a lot more effectively. Um, you're basically including additive synthesis with higher frequencies. And it sounds cool, it sounds great, but it can also sound a little bit muddy, so it really does depend on what you like. And, and just here are my notes, uh, values, I, I believe less than one. I always get these, this symbol confused because I think of a crescendo. I believe this is less than, and then the other one is greater than. <laughs> Common knowledge for a lot of people, not for me. Um, but in any case, I meant to say values less than one uh, sound more effective here where the sign control is, is passing an entire cycle over the course of one all the way to eight seconds. Um, mole control, keep it low, and here's the release. Let's see what this sounds like. Oh, I don't have more than one sound file. Uh, let's add um, something as low as one eighth of a second, which would have the sine wave travel over the course of eight seconds and one. Anything more than one, I mean, if you start getting into four and eight, that's that's also adding some, that additive synthesis effect. Oh, interesting. Just uh, selected the same pitch there. All right, adding a line and X line as we had done before. much the same motion as you heard, just a, a little bit simpler in tone. Hmm. Not really hearing the descent there. 
All right. Uh, actually, let me let me have it a little bit higher. Maybe I can hear it there. Nope. Can you hear it? Lower? I am kind of troubleshooting as I record this. Yeah. So again, I will explore better sound files and, and really mess with envelopes and, and the line and X line and see what's more effective. But it's almost there. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah, that was kind of a fast decay. You heard it, right? I, I barely heard it. Let's go wild. I'm actually gonna have the start be Eight. Eight to two. So again, um, working with envelopes and different sound files will really factor in as far as generating, generating something effective, uh, but also just uh, frequency, you know, low frequencies, low cycles per second or low amount of cycles per second will also have you hear that, that control fluttering. So, you know, that's, that's how you apply uh, sound files to something like frequency modulation. And again, this is the basics of frequency modulation. I do want to explore more of the, the sound complexities with FM as we go. Might take a break from it, might do some other things in Super Clatter, but I don't know. I'm kind of on a roll with FM, so we'll see how that works. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that. As quiet as those sounds were, I hope they were still delightful. Um, you know, until I see you next, keep producing and experimenting and preserving the art you love and more on Super Collider in the next year. Happy New Year, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.